Apologies for that. I just clicked the wrong button. Still getting used to the software. <laughs> I'm gonna start over again. Que pasa, campeones? My name is Diego. This is D Spot reporting live for Barça Blaugranes once again. In case you're new to this channel, you're probably wondering just what the heck is going on. Excuse the uh, mm, little confusions there. I uh, screwed up a little bit, pressed the wrong button using the new program. But once again, if you're wondering what the best place is to catch your Barca news, this is it right here, guys. Um, so drop in your questions below as we're getting settled and ready to talk about all the latest news. I want to talk about Barca. Obviously, that'll be the focal point. What happened over the weekend? What is going to happen later this week? Uh, today's deadline day. A lot of things to discuss. So I saw Mohammed earlier dropping in a couple of comments. Thank you, Mohammed, for taking the initiative and doing so. Keep putting your comments in the comment section below. Um, and I will get to your questions shortly. It's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride, perhaps, but nonetheless, stay tuned and let's get right into it. D spot for Barça Blaugranes. Because I'm blowing up the spot, blowing up the spot, blowing up the spot, blowing up the spot, and all that. All this paper, son. And thank you for subscribing once again. If you haven't already, I see Robinho Nitiya Hassan joining in the chat saying, What's up? Love from Pakistan. What's up, Nitiya? A D spot and Barça Blaugrana is loyal. Talk asking about Vila going to Roma. Um, indeed, that is something that we're going to discuss. Whether or not that will happen, we shall see. Um, Omi is saying, How is Mosquito doing? There are mosquitoes here in Barcelona already. I have mosquito bites. My three-year-old is not covered with mosquito bites, but spring is coming, as they say, not in uh, Game of Thrones, though. So, uh, first order of business. I wanted to quickly talk about uh, what we saw over the weekend, a thriller uh, that you know could have cost us very dearly, but something that... It happens sometimes, okay? Not even the league leader clear with 19 points over our arch rivals is going to have flawless games. And over the weekend, we saw, you know, something that we can expect to see probably more often this second half of the season. Uh, a game that was lackluster in performance, but also efficient in terms of productivity. Uh, we saw Coutinho uh, make his La Liga debut on the right side. I think we can all agree that, uh, you know, on the right side is probably not where we want to see him on the future. However, I don't discard that Valverde will continue to put him in on the right side and see if that is a place that he can get used to playing. Uh, we got to give him time, guys. We got to give him time. We got to give Valverde time. We got to get Coutinho time. I couldn't believe that I saw people already doubting Coutinho saying, oh, 160 million euro player, he's not going to fit. It's a disaster. If, you know, last week in the Copa del Rey against uh, Espanol, uh, Coutinho was a miracle and he always played for Barca. It looked like he always played for Barca, etc., etc. Then all of a sudden we went from that to the other extreme uh, where I saw people doubt, even newspaper, news outlets started to doubt his uh, signing, etc. I mean, you know, that's the news. That's the age that we live in. It's either all good or all negro, all bad, terrible. Uh, you know, so what can you do? I think his performance wasn't that bad. It obviously wasn't great. It wasn't as good as explosive as we saw last week, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, let's give it a little bit more time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Before we start bashing. As I see, Mohammed is back in the chat. Sorry about that, Mohammed. Earlier, you were the first lonely viewer, and then I pressed the wrong button. I explained it earlier in the vid, uh, and I... And uh, cancel the vid, so my apologies. Sad Assad saying, Barca Invincibles 2018. No more Coutinho on the right wing, please. Um, keep 
you know, filling in your comments as uh, what I would like to do and take advantage of this cool new software that I uh, uh, purchase. Uh, I want to go do the same thing what I did last week, which was... Look at that, by the way. Oh, oh, did you guys see that? It's the new D-Spot logo. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of that new D-Spot logo? Some of you guys will probably have seen it on my YouTube channel, uh, Twitter handle, Facebook account, Instagram, whatever. But uh, pretty cool, right? Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So uh, thank you to my friend Nevin. Uh, shout out to him for hooking a man up with that cool, awesome new logo. So like I said, what I want to do is just... Go down the um, the Barça Blaugranes Twitter uh, feed. Make sure you subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Because uh, here's where the news breaks. As we see here, first line of business and first order of or, or first line of conversation, first order of business is how will Barça line up against Valencia? What do you guys think? Will Coutinho be back in the starting lineup? Or will we see him start on the bench? It's going to be an interesting one, guys. I'm not going to lie. This is one that I, uh, those of you who follow me on my YouTube channel uh, at this, this spot uh, will know that I would have preferred to have seen this as a, uh, a, a final. I would have loved to have faced Valencia in the final. I think over two matches, we are certainly the stronger team. Uh, but... Uh, it, you know, considering the teams that are left, of course, we can still face Valencia in the final. We can still face Leganes in the final. We could even not pass to the final and lose against Valencia. Or, yeah, against Valencia. All those scenarios are, of course, possible. But uh, this one I would have liked to have seen in the final. Uh, however, that didn't happen. Semi-final is two legs against Valencia. Le Valencia losing over the weekend against Real Madrid. Tough loss for them. Uh, certainly, certainly a tough loss. But... How will we line up against them? Will we stick to the 4-4-2? Will it be a 4-3-3? Uh, Dembele is nearing, of course, his recovery. Uh, well, not against Valencia, certainly not. But, you know, what about a 4-3-3 lineup with uh, Coutinho in Dembele's place? That could be an interesting one, don't you think? Him having him on the uh, left-hand uh, side over there, <clears throat> just in front of Iniesta. Could be an interesting one. See how he connects with Jordi Alba. Uh, that's something I personally would like to see. Let me see what you guys have to say about that. Um, Nitya saying he should. Valencia sit back and counter. So Nitya thinks that is a good option. Mohamed is saying we won't continue to start against Valencia because Iniesta plays full matches against the uh, full match against Alaves. Give him a rest as much uh, as we can because we want him fit against Chelsea. That is absolutely certainly true. Um, you know, one of the things, the, one of the reasons why I kind of was in favor for the signing of Coutinho was, of course, that he could, uh, that we could give more rest to Iniesta and have him fit for the crucial, crucial Champions League knockout stage coming up in just two weeks' time. Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree with your assessment there, Mohammed. I would like to see, uh, Iniesta get a little, Iniesta get a little bit of rest. Why not? Um, uh, have him fit for the Champions League clash against, um, against Chelsea. Uh, I think that would be a good, good option. Uh, what else? What else? Let me. Let me get back to, bam, get back to the camera here. Um, something else that I wanted to bring up, of course, is the fact the, that it is deadline day. Deadline day means a lot of signings, a lot of excitement, particularly in the Premier League they, on Sky Sports. They have an excellent show uh, headed by none other than David Garrido, uh, which give you minute by minute reports on breaking news and this is something that I wanted to share with you because Barca I don't know if you guys are aware of this but Barca has just signed this kiddo from Arsenal we're used to normally seeing uh, players go from Barca over to England 
but uh, it was a little bit different today or yesterday, I should say. Bam. You see that? Barca signed Arsenal starter Marcus McGuain. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, let me know. Uh, more on that. Let's have a look at the excellent article written by our site manager, Jill Clark. Uh, Barca B has signed 18-year-old midfielder Marcus McGuain from Arsenal in a three-year deal. The teenager has been at Arsenal since joining the under-6 side and has a release clause of 25 millions. Um, very interesting that. I was very pleased to kind of see this happen. It's, again, the, the, the first time that I think we sign somebody from the Arsenal youth squad. Normally, it goes the other way around. So, uh, I don't know much about him, Nitigia. I, uh, I have to confess my ignorance. Um, but, you know, if, if he's 18 years old, which is meaning, you know, which means that he is kind of nearing his, uh, uh, not his prime, of course, but his mature phase. Let's not forget that Messi made his Barca debut at 16. Uh, an exceptional case, of course, but 18 years old. Uh, in my opinion, you know, at Barca B, is, is a kind of a trial and uh, Barca is of course with the signing looking for the long term seeing if this kid can fit into the first team squad at some point he plays in a midfield position so uh, that will be a heavily con contested uh, position in particular because of this signing here now this signing uh, of Montreal impact uh, the, the squad from the, the Canadian squad of Balou Jean-Yves Tabla is another one that raised my eyebrows. Um, let me know if you guys heard anything about him. I wasn't aware of this. It was my Canadian buddy, uh, one of my best friends who's based in Montreal. He called me up. He said, man, D, you guys just signed this guy, uh, this Canadian sensation. He's also 18 years old. <laughs> uh, everybody's talking about him and uh, he's moving over to Barcelona is for another three-year deal the buyout clause you see here for 25 million that could be raised to 75 million uh, if the two years if he completes the two years but uh, he said keep an eye out on this guy uh, he's very promising originally born in the Ivory Coast but immigrated to Canada since he was a child and um, I don't know, man. It's it's promising. And again, I, I the reason I bring him up is because it's another midfielder. Uh, so if we take into account that Marcus was a midfielder and uh, um, Balou is a midfielder, I see a lot of you guys in the chat asking about Artur as well. Artur is almost a done deal, if not already. So uh, let's have the latest on that. The, 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 the Barca's ever so close to signing Artur at the moment. So um, here, of course, we see Neymar, the, 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 the war, that Neymar declares war against Barca. But here we see Artur also very close to signing, apparently, according to Sport and the various news outlets, for 30 million. Another midfielder. So my question is, you know, Barca obviously sticking to their philosophy of uh, having very qu uh, highly talented midfield players, but are they all going to play and where are they going to play? Uh, we signed Coutinho, we signed, uh, uh, we still have obviously Iniesta, we have Sergio Roberto that want, is dying to play into the midfield, uh, we still have Rakitic, we have uh, Paulinho, we have uh, Andre Gomez, uh, we, we just signed Coutinho. Uh, I mean, you know, so stacked this midfield, it's getting a little bit worrisome in my opinion because, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? How are we going to bring all these, the, the, the Barca B players into the midfield? I'm talking about Alenia. I'm talking about the other guys that have been there for a long time. Uh, is there a place? Like, I'm just wondering what's going on. You know what I mean? Uh, so very interesting times for Barca, very interesting times for the young players who play in the Barca B team as well. Keep playing your hard, hearts out boys because, you know, the cream floats to the top and, uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm very interested. We are bidding fair, farewell at the same time to a lot of players, 
Uh, you know, I commented it on my Twitter as well. Barça Blaugranes did as well. La Fuga sigue. Uh, by that I mean, you know, the, 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 there's an escape, there's a leakage in the system somewhere because a lot of Barça uh, B players have left. Uh, I'm talking about the likes of uh, Antonio uh, Laz uh, Lozano, Wilfred Captum, Rafa uh, Mujica. A lot of players that are leaving the Barça B team as well, and 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 and, and rightfully so because you know, uh, as quickly as Barça is um, is signing players, just as quickly do I do do we see you know Barça B players leave as well? Another Barça starlet, uh, Sergio Gomez has has left the Liverpool. I think somebody was just. Um, uh, Adrian, I see your comment there. I just read Dortmund signed Sergio Gomez from Barça B. That is correct. So. Wow, a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on. You wonder exactly, you know, what what is good for the team, what is not good for the team, what's good for the players, what is not good. But man, interesting times for sure. Uh, let me get to you some of your questions. Sada Sada saying, Arthur is coming. We're go we're gonna have to hook up Coutinho or Paulinho with the EU passport. That is correct. Uh, of course, Barça. Already has the three extra comunitario, uh, comunitario players, so the non-EU players. So somebody will have to get hooked up with the the old pasaporte. That shouldn't be a problem. It usually isn't. Um, uh, on that note, sad saying we don't have a player like Artur who can control the midfield. We need him. Yeah, I, I like Artur. Again, I didn't know much about him beforehand, but what I've seen from him so far, uh, ever since kind of this news started to uh, come out of the woodworks, I started. I've been starting to following him. Been watching him play for Gremio. Again, if we can get Artur for thirty million, guys, and this is what I want you to keep into perspective: for thirty million, he has a buyout clause for fifty. Okay, Gremio has, has has his buyout clause set for fifty, even fifty million. Uh, I think right now is a bargain, considering from what I've seen from him, uh, extremely talented Barca DNA. I like his, uh, you know, he's a holding midfield player. He's been watching the likes of Andres Iniesta and 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 Xavi Hernandez, etc. So uh, he's got that style of, you know, that 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 that. that Barca bred um, um, style of play in him, and um, it's a steal, man. If, if for thirty million, it's it's una garantia, casi. It's a guarantee for fifty. I think, still think is a, is is a good price. I'll be surprised if he comes for for thirty, for that matter. Again, because his buyout clause is for is fifty. But uh, I just didn't want him to go to any other team at this point. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Mohamed is saying, I heard the rumor that Barca want to sign um, Alaba I, uh, in the summer because Dinya is not... Uh, so, let me, let me review it. I heard the rumor that Barca want to sign Alaba in the summer because Dinya is not good enough to play for Barca. We can see uh, it clearly and Alaba will be good signing. Uh, what do you think? I think Dinya should stay. Okay, um, Dinya is a player who came in highly recommended. Whoops, as I just knocked my microphone, uh, hasn't had many opportunity in my opinion yet. The minutes that he has played, I think he has gotten a pass. I don't think he's been so god awful to already say he's not good enough. Let's get rid of him. I think I thought over the weekend as well. Uh, he played decent. Of course, everything changed when Jordi Alba and uh, Sergio Roberto came in and Semedo and Dinia went out. Yes, that is true. That said, I don't want to give up on Dinia just yet. Um, you know, but that's just me. I'm, I'm, I know that I'm old school like that. You know, I, I'm a little bit maybe more patient. Uh, I know that this is an age of instant gratification. Get it now. Get it done. I want it now. I want it yesterday. I don't know what I'm trying to speak in a Scottish accent neither, which I shouldn't because I'm fucking awful at it. But uh, I know this is an age of instant gratification. And, you know, if as soon as the players had a bad game, it's like, get him out of here. We saw it. I said started the show with it with Coutinho. Uh, already players starting to doubt him or people starting to doubt him. News outlets starting to doubt him. I find it ridiculous. Uh, Dinha as well, I think, is... For me, he gets a pass, and I think he should uh, he should continue to stay. Niti is saying, I think Barca B players were training for the Valencia game. Will uh, will they play? It will, of course, be difficult. But Valverde, uh, 
I guess it should. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I haven't read that yet. I don't know which Barca B players has been playing with uh, the first team. I think Valverde would be very risky and very cheeky to put in Barca B players from the get go. Do I think that they should be on the bench? Yes. But against now we're in the semifinals of La Copa, guys. We could get a, a fantastic double for that matter. Un doblete Liga y, Cha, uh, Liga y Copa. Uh, que sería impresionante would be very impressive and very rare for that matter uh, so we could have a great season I don't think that you know my point being is that I hope Valverde will start with a full squad and uh, uh, you know play the best players available of course bringing up the Barca B players if the situation would uh, uh, see it fit um, anyway guys back to the Twitter handle here as we see that Gerard Deulofeo joins Watford on loan. Uh, Watford, of course, uh, where are they? They're in, in, in the mid table in the Premier League. Uh, I read some declaration, some, some statement from Deulofeo saying that he had many offers on the table, but he chose Watford because they are, they are a quality squad and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the, the usual things, the, the politically correct things that you need to say. Uh, I'm a little bit doubtful if this was, you know, really the best team that uh, was there for him. I really liked him. I would have liked to have seen him gone to Napoli. I don't know if in the end they just didn't make an offer or not. Uh, but, uh, you know, what for it is, I wish him all the best. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's un hasta luego por ahora. It's, uh, it's a see you later for now. And uh, he's, of course, going there on loan. So we'll see what happens. Uh, here we see... Tebas saying that Bar would have changed the Barça and Alaves outcome. Uh, interesting comments there. Tebas, where were you last year when the Gol Fantasma against Betis wasn't counted or against the Valencia game or in the Valencia game when we had the exact same scenario play itself out? Tebas, te vemos el, el plumero. We can see your colors, my friend, uh, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, here, Alej Vidal, the agent playing down Roma Talks. Uh, I, f I think it was you, Mohamed, that was asking about Alej Vidal. Uh, and the, 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 the rumors linking him to Roma. We'll see what happens within the next couple of hours. But it is deadline day. So, um, you know, if yesterday the manager came out or the, the player agent came out and said that... Uh, uh, you know, a link or move to Roma is unlikely, then, you know, for me, and I said it on my Twitter handle at this is the spot, then, you know, it probably looks like uh, Alej Vidal will at least stick around until the end of the season. And, um, you know, I think the kid deserves it. Um, I would like him to, to stick around. I know that Valverde wants to have a, a tight squad, likes to keep a tight squad of 22 players. We still have an overbooking in that sense, I think, right now. With uh, the move of um, uh, Deulo, we're, the, the squad is around 25 players, if I'm not mistaken. So even 24, he said, would be okay. But we still have a case of overbooking. Uh, Valverde likes to work with a tight squad. 22 is his favorite number. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let me uh, take a question over here. See Adrian saying our boy Bartra is back in La Liga with Real Betis. Yeah, Bart uh, Bartra is back at Bet Betis. Uh, that'll be interesting to see him there. I was kind of surprised to see that happen. I thought he was uh, happy or I thought Dortmund was happy with him. Uh, I wonder what happened there. Uh, you know, probably didn't really match the uh, expectations there. Uh, Shams is saying, Gomez, can we make a donation, Paul, and buy Gomez from Barca? Uh, Shams, Shams, uh, Gomez hater here. Um, I don't know if this is your first time on the show, uh, but my position regarding Gomez should be widely known right now. And that is that I'm not a Gomez hater. Oh, a shocker right there. I don't hate on the guy as much as uh, a lot of, I want to say you guys, you know, or, or a lot of the people on social media do. Uh, but, you know, I think Gomez has been, uh, has been all right. You know, certainly worth the 35 million that we paid for him. And, um, ever since the, the, the hump that he got over last year, I think this year in particular, he's been, you know, up to standard at least. <laughs> I see you, Shams. I see those emojis, buddy. Not agreeing with me. It's all good. I'm going to give you a like for that one. Pow! 
Um, but yeah, man, I think he's been all right. I think he's been all right this season. We uh, we can't hate him on him as much as last season. It's kind of proving his worth. So uh, I hope he sticks around. Uh, Sada Sada saying Vidal should get a hair transplant <laughs> with that sweet Barca Mernius. Yeah, man, what is what is the deal there? What is the deal there? I think uh, yeah, kind of looks like he did get a hair transplant. If I'm honest. Um, Shams is saying, haha, he's a great midfielder, but not for Barca. All right. That's, I, I'm not saying, look, I'm not saying that if a team would come and put in an offer of, say, 40 million, even 35 for that matter, that I wouldn't sell Gomez. Okay. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that, you know, uh, I'm happy that, in particular at the Camp Nou, that the people are over, you know, it used to be last season that every time Gomez touched the ball, the entire, you could just feel the tension. The entire stadium would be like, oh, he's going to fuck up. Oh, shit, he's going to fuck up. And, uh, and he would. <laughs> and I think, I feel like this season, these kind of, the, the, the fans as well, the, the, the come no, uh, faithful have, have gotten over that. So they're, they're supporting him now and he doesn't mess up as much anymore, neither. And I'm happy because it, it kind of got, it almost got to, to kind of like a bullying. I felt that there was a sort of a bullying, uh, atmosphere at the come no, uh, with regards to Gomez. And, um, uh, and yeah, I'm just happy that that's not. Any more, any longer the case. Omer, Omer, what's up, Omer Farouk? Uh, another D spot loyal there. What's going on? He's asking, is Carles Puyol Sergio Gomez agent like he is with Bartra? Uh, good one. I don't, is, I think he was, wasn't he? Isn't Puyol Sergio Gomez, uh, Sergio Gomez's agent? I think he is. Good question there. Good question. Um, Shams is saying, haha, he's a legend already. Gomez, that is. Uh, Ashutosh is saying Gomez is kind of a misfit. Gomez lacks confidence, uh, is An's statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. I think his confidence is slowly getting back. Uh, anyway, guys, let me get a couple more questions in as we're hitting that 30 minute mark. Um, pop in a couple more questions and uh, I'll be happy to answer them as. We're scrolling down here. Oh, let, let, let me, why don't I address this one here? Let, why don't I address the old elephant in the room? Let me switch the pantalla again to the, to my screen here. Isn't this cool? God damn. I love this software, man. I did. It was a good one. It was a good purchase. Um, so let me guys give you a little bit of the insights on the whole Neymar war with Barca. Uh, You'd think he would leave it alone, but Neymar wants more Mernies. Or should I say Neypa? Because we all know that Papa Neymar is behind this one, most likely. Uh, so he wants those 26 million. If, in case you guys didn't know, uh, the story, I'll give you guys a quick recap. <clears throat> Basically, when Neymar left, or when Neymar Extended his contract at Barca. They uh, signed a, 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 a una prima, a uh, how do you say prima in English? A uh, reward for signing the extension, and it was something along the lines of um, uh, like tw it was something ridiculous. It was uh, I think it was twenty six million for five years. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was around 5 million per year as an award for just signing your extension, which he already was going to be earning exponentially more, like doubling his salary or something. So, uh, he did that right before, uh, I think it was around the, the well, right when he extended his contract, which was, you know, last year, winter time, right? God damn. Hit my microphone again. Excuse me. Uh, so what happened? Well, we all know what happened over the summer. Neymar said, I want to get out and uh, I don't want to be here anymore. So he packed up his bags, left Neymar or uh, PSG, I should say, paid the 220 million euro clause. However, Neymar said, mm, excuse me, guys, not only am I going to get, you know, whatever, how much money PSG is throwing at me right now, but I also uh, still should be getting an additional 26 million euros from you guys. And Bar Barca said, Huh? What are you what are you talking about, buddy? What, what, what is it you're saying? And he says, I want to have 220 or no, 26 million euros 
uh, that you owe me for me signing my extension. And Barca said, these 126 million uh, are only, they see that, 26 million are only if you stay at Barca. And here, you know, we already gave you your 5 million for the first year, but we're not going to give you the remainder. No way. So uh, Neymar got pissed and said, you know, this is some bullshit and uh, want, basically left the PSG. But this whole case has been pending since then, right? Um, so he now is declaring war apparently on Barca saying, you know, I want these 26 millions uh, with a 10% interest fee for all the trouble that you guys are putting me into. So he's now uh, suing Barca for 30 million euros. 30 millions. Um, there it is right there. 30 millions. And um, Barca is saying, man, this is ridiculous. So Barca is actually countersuing for 75 million euro. Okay. Basically saying that, uh, you know, Neymar didn't, uh, no cumplió su palabra. He didn't uh, fulfill his word. And, um, uh, you know, he, he, he left before these. Uh, he left before uh, b b before his contract was uh, finished, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, uh, long story short, it's a uh, it's a matter of you know whether Barca is going to get seventy five million euro or Neymar getting twenty six million euro. Whatever it is, it's uh, in my opinion very childish, uh, and it might sound weird, but I mean, really, guys, are we going to be at this day and age really talking about? You still owe me money. I still want 26 millions. Now you owe me 75 millions. It's, it's something. I come on, man. Come on. Uh, in, in this day and age where these numbers are just getting stratospherico and just absolutely out of hand, ridiculously big uh, with what players are earning, with what clubs are earning. Uh, it's like, I don't know, man. I don't, uh, what do you guys think in the comment section? I'm a little bit... Uh, as you can see, speechless at the moment, but uh, I, I find it, it's a low blow. And I, didn't, I, I was almost going to say I didn't expect this from Neymar, but maybe that's me being naive and I should have expected this uh, as he's sitting here with his Nepa in, you know, first class, whatever it is, private jet. But uh, anyway, man, we'll see how it ends. I'll keep you guys posted, of course, as always. Uh, and saying, uh, was Neymar Jr. Mexican? <laughs> no, he was certainly wasn't Mexican. And neither am I for that matter. But I do do a very good Mexican accent. Mexican, Espanol, no sé. If you like, I can do also Mexican. Very good at it, brother. Orale, cabrones. Bueno, en fin. Ya estamos, chicos. 33 minutes in. D-spot here on Barça Blaugranes. Wishing you guys a very good day. Um, looking forward to the... Champions League clash that's in two weeks time and uh, you know I'll of course report guy report back on uh, next week uh, make sure you check out my YouTube channel I still see some of you guys that are not going over to my YouTube channel baffles me I wonder why because there's a whole lot more Barca content on my YouTube channel just search for D spots or go to the following address that is uh, www youtube.com forward slash c forward slash d spot all right make no mistake go over there subscribe to my youtube channel and click that notifications button i'm always there doing just a little bit more content as opposed to my weekly video for barça blaugranes so uh, come over there hang out and uh that's it guys let's get it okay have a good rest of the week thank you for your questions thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel and to Barça Blaugranes, share this platform for the latest and greatest in Barça news. Vamos chicos, visca el Barça y hasta pronto. Chao.